Welcome to Workout Wednesday, week 25. Uh, my name is Rob Saunders. Uh, this week is another week uh, in June's music month. And one of the things that we would like to do this week is visualize some music. Um, so earlier, I would say two or three weeks ago, I was trying to figure out what we were going to do for this challenge and came across an old visualization, not too old, a few years old, um, that uh, I've seen before, and this was called warming stripes. And what warming stripes was, was a way to visualize uh, global warming over time where each year represented um, a temperature on the global scale. And as you can see, as you get towards more recent years, it actually turns red and it's a really effective way of visualizing that change in temperature. Um, and I thought, wouldn't it be neat if we took each, uh, call it column of data, and assigned a different color to a note, each note in a song. Um, and so that's essentially what we're doing this week. We're gonna create a visualization where uh, we uh, store the notes or collect the notes of various songs and their and their vocals, and then we assigned a, a visualization uh, to them. So uh, awesome to have you guys on this, uh, on this week's challenge. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first part of this challenge is picking out songs and figuring out which ones that we'd like to uh, include in our visualization. The thing that I'd like you guys to go do is go to a site called noobnotes.net. Now, once you get to this site, basically there is a whole lot of different um, songs that are listed here. And in the songs, they have the notes, the sequential notes that are, are shown in the song. Uh, now you're going to notice there's carrots, there's dots, there's ast asterisks. It, it has to do with the octave that the note is played in. Now for the visualizations that we created, we only care about the note. Um, I'll show you in the page code in a second what that looks like and, and how we're going to extract the note. But the important part is that you just know that these pages provide the notes of the song that we'll be collecting. So right now, all I want you to do is collect a list of songs that you want to include in your visualization grab the URL, grab the uh, artist name, and grab the um, song name, and put it into a format kind of like this. We're going to call this songs.xlsx, so just an Excel file of the URL, song name, and song artist that you would like to visualize. Now, before we start actually collecting the data, let's actually have a look at what's going on in the page code here. So if you right-click on any of these notes, and you actually click inspect, you're going to be able to see that each note, and I've actually done a lot more digging, so I'll, I'll give you guys a little bit of a hint here, but each note um, sits in a span class, or in a span um, element rather, and it's a uh, letter, um, irrespective of the octave that you're in, uh, is listed as data note letter as an attribute. So we're going to use this when we go through uh, the data collection phase to actually automatically extract this information from the website and then to do it dynamically by creating a query that we can um, actually inject uh, or a function rather that we can inject the song name into and the song URL into so that we can extract all the notes for every song automatically uh, within our uh, data process. So um, right now uh, just really familiarize yourself with with this again you know, we're going to we want to extract out these span um, items and then look for the data note letter here pretty soon. Let's start collecting our data. Uh, first thing, let's just go grab any of the URLs here. For the fun of it, let's just do Super Mario Brothers. So we're going to copy that URL. We're going to actually go into Power BI. Let's go to Get Data. Let's go to Web. Let's type in the URL, hit OK. Okay, so what you're going to notice here is you'll go ahead and click on the different tables that are available, but none of these tables actually give you the information we need, which is the song notes for the song uh, in a format that we can actually 
utilize. So what I actually like to do uh, is go ahead and pull the HTML code. So we're going to pull the HTML code, code and hit transform data. All right. Now that we've got the uh, data, I've actually renamed um, this to function get notes. I'm going to be creating a, a series of transformations, and then we'll turn this into an actual function. So uh, let's go ahead and get this query started. Um, I'm going to basically uh, lay out how I was able to extract the data I needed from this HTML. Um, you can come up with your own method of doing so. I think it depends on the situation, depends on the website. Um, but what I did was uh, in here, if if you actually split the text by the attribute that the the data note letter uh, comes from, it actually would allow the first thing that you see to be the first value after that data note uh, letter. So if I say uh, data note letter, and then we'll say equals quote, um, essentially the, uh, the letter would be like A or C or C sharp or um, something, it looks something like that. So if we basically just look for data note letter equals quote, the thing what we see in the first row should be, um, well, the first row is going to be the first uh, set of data up until it sees data note letter, but then everything after that should show you um, the value of, of uh, data note letter. Um, so if we click that, you'll see that it's actually splitting into rows everything. So data note letter equals quote C, data note letter equals quote D, uh, and allows us to uh, really show uh, very easily all the notes um, that we um, have in the HTML. So the easiest thing to do now is to convert this to a table so that we can start to do uh, additional filtering. I'm going to actually go into transform, I believe is where it's going to be, and I want to extract text before delimiter. Um, that's going to allow us to basically take everything before the quote, which is going to be our note letter. Uh, note letter. So here you can say, we'll call it the note, we'll rename that. Uh, and then we don't want to take this first one, and I assume that on every web page it's going to be HTML lang equals quote. Um, but if it's not, let's just uh, future proof this. Let's go ahead and create an index column starting from zero, and then I'm just going to click and I'm going to filter out zero. I'm going to call this note number, and that's it. Now I have a list of note numbers for every note in the song uh, for uh, Super Mario Brothers. Let's go ahead and turn this query into a function. Uh, the way that we're going to do that, we're going to go ahead and go to the advanced editor. And now all we're going to do is create a uh, declaration for URL as text. And then this is the language for a function. So URL is text. So URL is your input to the function get notes. And here we're just going to replace this text with URL. And that's it. Now we've created a function where the URL is a parameter. And just to test out whether it works, I'm going to go ahead and put in the URL. Uh, for Super Mario Brothers theme that we used before. And you can see that the function works just fine. Um, and then we're going to use that uh, with our other data uh, that we uh, stored in the Excel file here in just a minute. Let's actually go back here and go to the Excel workbook as a new source. We're going to load in this songs file that we had created before. So we have this songs file, which has the have to go ahead and create a um, the first rows and setter here, but it has the URL, the song name, and the song artist. And what I really like to do here is to put the function uh, for get notes against these values. So what you do um, here, let's uh, let's go ahead and go to add column. And let's say invoke custom function, new column name. Um, I'm not going to say um, notes, and then the query is get notes. And then we actually are using the URL to 
click OK. And here you can see that we need to expand out notes to note and the note number. Let's go ahead and click OK. Um, and just really quick, I'm just going to rename these. There we go. And then let's just go ahead and rename this as Song Data. All right, so now um, what we were able to do uh, was not just look at how would you um, extract data from an HTML page uh, to get the song notes for various songs, but we also invoked that function to include it for the songs that uh, include all that data for the songs that we were interested in. And now we have a data set for the URL, the song name, artist, uh, the note and the order of the notes uh, that occur for all these different songs. Um, now we'll pull this into our uh, visualization and, and start actually building the dashboard. Now that we have the data within Power BI, uh, I'm just going to show you how to create at a high level the, the visualization. I'm not going to take you through all the formatting changes, but I'll take you through a few of them. So. Um, the first thing we need to do is create a, a stack column chart. We're going to open this up. Uh, the x-axis is going to be your note number. The y-axis is going to be, well, it should be 1. So let's create a new measure here. Let's say 1 equals 1. We want to have the same height for everything, so we might as well just set it to some arbitrary number. Uh, here it's set to 1. I uh, want to make sure that um, we also bring in our note as the legend. Here you can already start to see this differentiation of color. Uh, important thing to do here just while testing this out or, and just by working is to go one song at a time. So I'll just drag in song here. Let's just do Bohemian Rhapsody as our um, initial song to uh, test out with this. Um, just a couple things really quick. You can see the x-axis. Um, I want it to go as far over, uh, or the, the colors to go as far over to the right as possible. Uh, to do that, I'm going to set the maximum to the maximum number of note number, not the uh, count. Uh, I'm going to actually take the uh, x-axis here, get rid of the title, uh, get rid of the actual axis. I'm going to do the same with the y-axis. I'm going to get rid of the legend. I'm going to uh, let's see if we can actually see this. Let's pull a stone. Um, I want to get rid of tooltips. So let's go to general and get rid of tooltips. We'll get rid of the title. Um, now we have getting closer to what I'd like to see here. Now let's go ahead and this is how I did color coding, and, and you guys can do any color scheme that you'd like to do. You could even um, have a file which uh, provides different color schemes that you could select from. There's a whole lot of fun things that, that you could do with this challenge. But what I did was I started with uh, C and I did a combination of some blue and purple colors because I thought that it was uh, appropriate. So C is the base of every octave. So what we'll do is we'll start with C and we'll kind of work our way up to darker and we'll circle back around to, to A, A sharp and B here. Um, starting at C, let's just select C and C sharp, just because we don't have a ton of colors, I'm going to actually do the same colors for uh, certain values. And I'm going to alternate between blue and purple. I just think that might be um, uh, a good looking color scheme. And again, this is for fun. There's no real uh, right answer here. We're just really trying to visualize, um, you know, these musical notes in a way that we find interesting and fun. And it along the way is going to teach us a few things about um, how we creates and invoke functions, and um, yeah, so this is an example of what uh, Bohemian Rhapsody might look like, or if we switch to Chandelier, you're going to see a much lighter toned version of this. Feel free to play around uh, with this. Again, you know, let me give you an example of some things that can happen if you get a little uh, creative. Um, you know, you can really quickly start to grab, you know, different color tones and, and different things to have going on, and in the visualization. So again, you guys can um, make some selections on color schemes that you find interesting, that you find fun, um, and let me know, uh, you know what your designs are and some of the neat things that you guys are able to come up with.
uh, again, after some editing, uh, you do end up with something that's a little bit more resembling the challenge that you were probably presented with, uh, which is just a uh, more formatted version of uh, the same thing that we uh, just showed you. So best of luck. Again, thank you guys for joining us for another Workout Wednesday, and I'll look forward to the next challenge that I present to you. Thanks. Just one slight bit of uh, bonus content before letting you go. Uh, I assume that uh, everybody is aware of how to add a slicer, but if you're not, it is just a custom, uh, or not a custom, but a regular visualization here on the panel. Um, it'll allow you to put the uh, song name here uh, as a filter. So that's all that I've done there. Um, so just in case anybody was curious, uh, just wanted to add that in. All right, thanks again. Have a great week.